Hey guys, as promised, I'm gonna go over how to use the Hugen in conjunction with the pistol. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so right off the bat, I just wanna show you that there is nothing in this, right? There's no rounds, it's safe. There is something in the chamber right there that's not around. What that is, is one of those lasers for dry firing. Um, I just got done dry firing a little while ago before doing this, so you can see nothing in the gun, all right? So right off the bat, I wanted to go to, uh, through a quick explanation of why I designed the Hugen the way that I did so that you don't have to go to the previous videos that I made. Um, and the, the design really, uh, or what I'm going to mention about the design is going to be more geared towards this video about using it in conjunction with your pistol. The main takeaways from those last videos that I made was while I was on a team uh, in MARSOC, uh, we were issued a SOC P dagger, or we issued a, a dagger called the SOC P dagger which is the knife that we use within our martial art called Sock P. Now Sock P is a martial art that's used when you're in full kit and you're clearing a house. So it's used through CQB, uh, which is uh, close quarters battle or what the SEALs call CQC, which is close quarters combat. So in the event that you are conducting CQB, uh, you're clearing a house and then you get wrapped up for whatever reason, doesn't matter when it happens, you just get wrapped up you fall to the ground or something, that what you need to do is you need to create space. You, your main goal is to get your main weapon up, which in this case, you know, per the scenario I described in one of those, uh, you know, previous videos, uh, you're, you can't get to your rifle because he's like right on you. You can't get to your pistol for whatever reason, maybe it's pinned down or your arm is injured or whatever, you know, you're using that hand to like try and push the guy off you or something. Um, and you need to be able to get to something so that you can actually create that space to get to your next best weapon. In this case, because of what I laid out, you have to go for your knife, right? Because that's the only thing that you have access to at this moment. The knife is gonna allow you to create space so that you can then go to your pistol, create more space if necessary, and then you know uh, reholster that and go to your main weapon system and continue the fight you know, to the next room or whatever the situation is. So there are a couple important factors that you need to consider when selecting a knife that you're gonna have on your kit if you think you're ever gonna be in a situation uh, that you're gonna be under extremis. Um, there are a couple things about that knife that need to be in the design so that you can be successful in that situation. But first, let's talk about being under extremis. And when you're in fight or flight mode, you're, you're gaining a lot, but you're also trading for those gains. So you're gaining extra awareness, you're gaining uh, strength, you're gaining endurance, but you're trading your fine motor skills. So grabbing a knife and, you know, depending on the situation, there might be oil or blood or whatever, you know, for a hand, you know, trying to grab a handle that's super slick, you know, has a weird shape and is kind of difficult to get to or whatever. You need something that is extremely easy to deploy and something that will stay in your hand while you're using it, regardless of, you know, what bodily fluids or, you know, fluids that just may be in the area that may make it difficult to hold on to that knife while you're creating space. Now, what I chose to go with was a ring. The reason why I chose to go with that is obviously I had some experience with the ring uh, from the Sock P Dagger. Um, I borrowed uh, the diameter of the ring from the Sock P Dagger so that it would just really be a, a seamless transition from having the Sock P Dagger because I, I would keep my dagger on my kit right here. Um, it'd be a seamless transition for me and others that you know, we're used to using the Sock P Dagger um, because the uh, the ring itself was very similar. Uh, even the shape right here um, is on the Sock P Dagger or something like it on the Sock P Dagger. Um, so just super easy, something that if you have any experience with the Sock P Dagger, uh, this ring is gonna be like almost the same as far as being able to take it out and just how it feels in the hand. Now there's an inherent risk with using a ring and that risk is being degloved. What being degloved means is having the flesh and skin ripped from the bone of your finger. And the reason why that's able to happen is this ring is much stronger than your flesh. And if for whatever reason you have this hand or you, you have your finger within the ring and something rips the blade from your hand that's extremely powerful, it's, it's going to take the path of least resistance and that's going to be through your flesh right? Because it's just going to be ripped from your hand and you're going to look at your hand and you're just going to be seeing a bone. So some people's answer to that was that they, uh, there are knives that have these like dramatic angle changes in the handle 
and I'll see if I can find, I'll have to get permission from the maker I'm thinking of. Um, but uh, he's also on Ridge Runner Blades. His name is Corey Bowman. He has a model that has this, uh, you know, and um, so I'll, I'll put a picture on here so you can see. But you see that angle change in the handle and what that allows you to do is scoop up your hand into that angle change and, and quickly deploy the knife, right? That, that's awesome. You, you then mitigate the risk of being degloved, but there's a problem with it. And there's a reason why I didn't go with that angle change. I went with the ring. The issue is it's much harder to retain that knife while you're doing other things than it is with something with the ring. Is it possible? Like, is it possible to use the concepts that I'm showing as far as using it in conjunction with a pistol? Yeah, it's possible, but it's gonna be much more difficult to do that properly uh, when under extremis, which is the thing that like, if you're doing something like that, <laughs> most likely, unless you're some sort of freak of nature, like you're gonna be in extremis. So you're not gonna be, you're, you're gonna lose those fine motor skills. You're not gonna be able to maintain the balance of your, uh, you know, of that angle change of that, that piece of handle while you're going for your pistol, while your hand is open. It's good luck. I mean, is it possible? Yes, but the chances of that actually working out are very low. And I wanna make clear that by no means is that a bad design. It's a great design and it mitigates a very big problem. It just doesn't fit the bill for what I was trying to do specifically uh, with the Hugen. Yes, there is a risk in using the ring, I got it. The thing is though, is you gotta give to get a little, right? So we're, giving, we're taking the inherent risk of being degloved so that we can maintain this blade while we're creating space, again, Angle change is great, but that can still slip out of your hand. This is like locked in a lot better than that angle change. Uh, so if there's bodily fluids, it's staying in your hand. Not only that, but then I can open my hand, go for my pistol very easily, even under extremis, and it's not, I'm not gonna lose retention of my knife. Now here's an important distinction between the Hugen and the uh, Sock P Dagger, outside of the blade shape, we'll get to that. Um, is the, the fact that the Sock P Dagger has no scales. It's a skeletonized knife because it's designed to be extremely thin um, so that you can take that out and put it like, and use it with your pistol and have like minimal, uh, what would you say? Like, I don't know, impediment in between your hand and the, the pistol grip. Which is awesome for a knife that's completely geared towards combatives. Um, you know, it's, and that brings us, you know, to the discussion about the blade shape of the Sock P Dagger versus the Hugen. Um, the Sock P Dagger is like, it's, you know, says in the name, it's a dagger, um, which is great for penetrating people. Again, it's geared towards, uh, purely combatives, um, but it sucks at everything else. Right. And so, uh, and you might be like, oh, well, yeah, I could cut stuff with it. It's like, yeah, cool. You're right. It, it's a blade. It's sharp. It'll cut things, but it's not going to do it very well. And the, the chances that you're gonna actually take out your dagger and stab someone with it are very, very low. And, and it should be. You don't wanna be using a dagger against someone in a uh, situation like that. Like, that means things went terribly wrong, right? And so it's, it's good to have something that can do that, but you, need, you also need something that is gonna be uh, more useful to you in the tasks that you're more likely gonna be doing. And so I say that because a lot of guys had these daggers and they never got used. They just stayed in the sheath, right? And the reason why is because they sucked at all the normal tasks that we have to do, like cutting 550 cord or lashings or opening a box, like just all your everyday tasks, like your EDC tasks that most normal people do on a daily basis anyways. That's a lot of the stuff that we do as well. You want to carve something? Yeah, good luck doing that with a dagger. You can, but it's, it's not going to be a great experience. It's also going to be hard to do it safely without cutting yourself. You know, like if you're making, you know, snares or something for a survival situation, like there's just so many limitations that a dagger has because it's meant for penetration of people. It's meant as a combative dagger, not something for survival or for EDC tasks. And so uh, we have this saying called uh, ounces equal pounds and pounds equal pain. And if you're gonna have a knife on your kit, it better be something that you're gonna be using or it's just extra weight. And it's not good to make a habit of just putting stuff on your kit because it's cool. 
um, it, it should have a use. It should be something that you're using or you're just carrying extra weight for no reason. Which is why when I became an instructor and I actually had some time outside of just being an operator, I went to try and solve this problem. Because I was already making knives, so it just made sense to one of the knives that I should be making is something to solve the issue of having something on your kit that wasn't actually even being used. And that's how the Hoogan was born. I wanted something that could be drawn quickly in extremis. I wanted something that could penetrate people, which is why this, the point is in line with the center line of the knife. Um, that's one of the aspects of a dagger that makes it so good uh, at penetration. Obviously there's many other things, it's just one of them. Um, but the, the big difference being I wanted a belly profile and a spine profile that would allow for EDC tasks. So this is where we start talking about giving a little to get a little, right? So a dagger is going to have an omnidirectional handle. So if I grab it from the left side, it's gonna be comfortable. And if I grab it from the right side, it's gonna be comfortable because the shape mirrors on either side. So no matter how you what hand you grab it with, it's gonna be easy to grab, right? And that's the thing that, that's another thing that you wanna to consider too when having a uh, knife on your kit, like a kit knife is can I grab it with both hands? Because like I stated from before, you might be injured or have something pinned down one of your sides, like your strong hand, you may not be able to get to your knife with that. You need to be able to reach it with your, your weak side, um, or you need to have multiple knives, which then you get into the issue of having too much weight or too many things all over you. Um, so this is where we have to give a little, right? And that's why it's not, or so it's, this is not an omnidirectional handle, but it's a thin enough handle where I can grab it, or really, I guess this is how you're gonna draw it out of your kit. I can grab it like this and it's comfortable, and I can grab it like this the opposite way, and it may not be as comfortable, but it's still doable and it's still comfortable enough where I can still put it to work in extremis. But the thing is though, is there there's an advantage to having in, and this is a different Hugen as you can see, just real quick. Um, I have two different ways that I do it. I do the double-edged Hugen, which is more geared towards the combative. And then I have the, the normal Hugen, which is more geared towards EDC tasks. You can see that it's not actually sharp. You can actually put your finger on the edge versus this one. Probably not gonna wanna put your, your thumb up there if you're like carving or doing something. Um, this will allow for that. But to get back on track, the advantage of having a non-omnidirectional handle when it comes to the case of this knife is the fact that one, that allows me to make it a lot more slim, right? So uh, it has a smaller footprint on your kit. If you were to just mirror this handle, obviously it'd be coming out to like right here. So that's not that's not great um, when it comes to, you know, trying to keep a small footprint. So you have that, not only that, but this back, this flat back gives me, a, uh, you know, a great support point for me to be able to put more pressure for a cutting task than if I, had it completely mirrored. I'd have to put my my pressure on right here and not back here. Now I can use it right here, but because of the flat, I can come back here and you know, maybe if I'm coming right here, I can do more detailed work, but it just gives me another support point that I wouldn't otherwise have if this uh, handle mirrored itself. Now next, uh, the thing that I didn't quite address earlier when I was saying that the Sock P dagger is, you know, is skeletonized. Like, why didn't I make this skeletonized then? Um, and that's purely for the fact that you will be using this for EDC tasks. And can you do EDC tasks with a skeletonized knife? Yes, but it's not as comfortable. And that that's one of the things that uh, I've realized, obviously, if you're using a tool a lot uh, and over a long period of time, you want it to have some sort of ergonomics and comfort. Um, it needs to be something that you're gonna wanna grab when there's a task and not just borrow someone else's knife or not grab it at all. Um, so that's what this is. I made the sculpting so it was really comfortable in the hand, but it was also thin enough to where it doesn't, it doesn't really impede the grabbing of the pistol as much as you would think. So now we can actually finally get to the reason why you're even watching this video after that super long ass explanation about the design. Um, and I apologize, it wasn't meant to be as detailed initially, but I feel like it's important for you guys to know those aspects. Like why did I do the certain things that I did? Um, solely because there's, there are gonna be people out there, naysayers that 
are like, ah, oh, well, it should be like this or it should be like that. Well, now at least you have an idea of why I designed it the way that I did. Um, but anyways, it, per the scenario that I painted earlier, um, you know, you had to go for your knife, you draw it out of your kit. And in this case, for me, I would be drawing it right here, which is nice when there's someone on top of you, you can just literally start stabbing like this and start, uh, you know, putting it out to where you're creating more space. And as he starts backing up, because he's going to want to get away from that, um, then that's when I can go to my next best weapon. And in this case, it's my pistol, which right now, um, I don't know if you guys saw earlier, but I use the Ronin Senshi belt. Um, it's been a while since I've looked at that, their stuff. I don't know if they have any like super much cooler belts now or whatever, but the Senshi belt's expensive, but that's possibly one of the best gear purchases I've ever made in my career. I highly recommend the Ronin Tactics like belts. Um, I haven't used any of their other stuff, but the Ronin Senshi belt is, it is awesome. It is really, really good. But, but anyway, sorry. Uh, so we created that space and then we're just gonna go straight. Like I retain my, my knife. I just come straight back to grab the pistol and you can see that it's in my hand right? It's still in my hand, but I'm still able to come. And because it's thin enough, I can still get a nice purchase on my pistol grip and I can present my, my weapon and I can then obviously process the threat. Now, for those of you that buy the Hoogan and go and try this, uh, you need to understand this is another one of those things where we give a little to get a little, right? And what we're giving up is, is this gonna be as comfortable? Am I gonna have as much purchase on the pistol grip as I would if I didn't have a knife in my hand? The obvious answer is no. Now, why, why am I saying that? Because there are people out there that will go, wow, it, it's, like, it's like there's something in between the pistol grip and my hand and I don't like that. And it's like, well, yeah, no, like that's, there's a knife there, you know? So it's like, there's only so much that you can do to make that comfortable. Even with the sock P dagger, there is a, a bit of an impediment and it's because there's something in between your hand and your pistol grip, which if you're trying to do like just pure marksmanship, that's not what you want. But in a, in a situation of extremis, like you don't have a choice. And so the whole reason we're even talking about using the Hoogan with a, a pistol is not like, oh, this is the cool guy way of doing it. It's, it's not that at all. It's all about retention of your knife. And the thing that you don't want is to, because you, you could easily create space, throw your knife down and go straight to your pistol, right? The issue is you're going to be so amped up that you're going to leave your knife. And then we'll say like five rooms down or whatever. Now your buddy has got shot in the chest and you need to open an occlusive dressing for him. And now you don't have a knife on you, you know? that's not the time when you don't want to have a knife. So you want to be able to retain your knife if possible. And having a ring is what allows that to happen, right? You can seamlessly go from creating space with your knife to then creating space with your pistol. And then, you know, once everything is like done or you got the guy off of you or whatever, you can holster your pistol, holster your knife, get your main weapon system up. So just one more time, I'm right here, you know, the, the guy is on top of me, I get this, I start creating space. I have enough space to get to my secondary weapon. I pull this out, I start plugging him. He then backs up or he's been processed, he's done. I can then holster my weapon, holster my knife, get my main weapon system up, and then I can continue the fight and fall, flow back in with the stack. So I hope that was uh, enough for you guys to understand how the Hoogan can be used in conjunction with the pistol. Again, this is not something that you should be doing on the range. You know, it's like, it's not gonna be ideal for marksmanship, but it is a way for you to retain your knife, be able to create that space that you need to get to your primary weapon system. Like, in other words, you, you shouldn't be buying the Hoogan for that one thing, because the, the, the issue is that the chances of you actually go falling into that sort of scenario is extremely low, but it is something that is within the design of the Hoogan that I wanted to explain so that people know that that's something that can be done. Okay, that's not the main feature of the Hoogan. The main feature of the Hoogan is the fact that it's quickly deployable 
and it's still something that can do penetration if needed, but it's designed in a way where it can uh, easily accomplish uh, EDC tasks, okay? So this is more of a everyday combative knife, if you will. So I hope that helps. If you guys have any questions, I guess you can throw some questions in the comments. And uh, if I get like a bunch of questions or something like that, then I can address that in another video. All right, I'll see you guys later.